Art is a science, and learning modules have hierarchical relationships. Different modules follow a sequence, and there needs to be a foundation for the previous level before mastering the content of the next level. Insufficient understanding of the previous level module will hinder learning at the next level. Without understanding perspective, it is difficult to comprehend light and shadow. Without understanding light and shadow, learning color will also be difficult. This is why progress can be challenging even after watching many tutorial videos. The lack of basic knowledge can hold me back. I've hit yet another wall in my painting. Well, to be honest, this happens about 99% of the time. All I can do is try to solve the current problem as best I can. This time, I went back to basics. Perspective. The exercises that I once ignored, thinking that I understood them, turned out to be poorly understood. I only had a vague grasp of the basic concepts. I am a pragmatist. I'm only interested in learning about something if I know what it can do. But I'm having trouble expressing myself in different ways because I don't have enough basic understanding. So I need to fix these problems. How to use a perspective grid. I am able to draw a perspective grid or find a photo as a reference and locate the perspective grid within it. However, there are two problems. When the vanishing point is very far away, the canvas has to be large. When sketching, I don't usually look for vanishing points. For simple objects, I follow the larger in the foreground, smaller in the background rule. However, when I add more objects, I encounter problems. How can I find vanishing points in my sketch and create a perspective grid to assist with drawing the correct perspective? How to calculate proportions. For example, how to calculate two equally sized squares drawn in the same space. As long as you know how to ensure correct perspective and proportions, you can draw anything from any angle. Let's solve the problems. When I need to draw a chair, I can use a rectangular box to determine its perspective. This box is made up of two cubes. How can I draw the first cube and the perspective grid? The mistake I made before was drawing the perspective grid first, which often made it difficult to achieve the desired perspective. At the start, there is no need to determine the vanishing point. Simply draw a square box by hand. If you cannot determine the box's proportions, you can use a 3D model as a reference. Then, locate the vanishing point and correct the lines of the box to ensure proper perspective. How to draw a perspective grid in Photoshop. In Photoshop, you can use the pen tool to determine the vanishing points. First, create a new path, and then click on the pen tool. Now it is easy to check if the perspective is correct. My habit is to draw perspective grids as a reference and only use the pen tool when it's unsure. It is important to note the following. In a two-point perspective situation, the horizontal and vertical lines intersect at 90 degrees. Therefore, it is best if the horizontal line is parallel to the canvas. If it is tilted, the difficulty will increase exponentially. It's much easier to draw a perspective grid in Procreate. Turn on Drawing Guide, Edit Drawing Guide. Simply click on the screen to determine the vanishing point. If you turn on Drawing Assisted in Layers, the lines you draw will align with the perspective grid. This way, you will never draw incorrectly. This is two-point perspective. When using three-point perspective, an additional vanishing point will be added above or below. This vanishing point is usually far away from the canvas. When should we use two-point perspective? And when should we use three-point perspective? In the video, How to Create a Sense of Immersion, I discuss using three-point perspective to simulate the eye and create a more immersive experience for the viewer. Simulated eye is a term used to explain a technique. More accurately, it refers to the angle of vision that creates the effect of objects appearing larger when closer and smaller when farther away. This is a camera. The camera is oriented parallel to this cube, presenting a two-point perspective. If the camera is pointed downwards, the distance from the camera to each end of the square will be different. The farther end will appear smaller, creating a contraction effect, which is three-point perspective. It will be more intuitive to view in 3D.
Next, we will calculate the proportions. Here is a cube. How can you draw a cube of exactly the same size next to it? We can find the center point of a cube by using the diagonal line. Two cubes can be combined to form a rectangle. The center of the rectangle will be here. Draw a diagonal line through the center to obtain equal sized cubes. This method can determine the orientation of space, allowing us to understand the proportion and position when placing objects within it. We will use drawing a room from different perspectives as an example. Draw a cube divided into 16 equal parts using the method discussed earlier. First, determine the plan view and side view and grasp the proportion and orientation. Through this information, we can determine the bed, cabinet, and chair by using boxes, then add details. The same method applies to other angles as well. This one has a proportion problem because the first example is not an isometric cube. This is the last example. You may have noticed that the angles of the pizza box and the chair are not consistent. How can we calculate in this situation? In the video, How to Create a Sense of Immersion, I discussed the method of using the angle of the section, where the angle increases as the distance from the horizon line increases, and vice versa. This technique is suitable for drawing outdoor scenes or sketches. However, if you want more accurate drawings, you will still need to do calculations. Regardless of how many sets of perspectives, their vanishing points will always be on the same horizontal line. All we need to do is add another path and draw an additional set of perspective grids as a reference. For complex objects, there is a hack that can be used as long as you are able to draw a box. For instance, how can we place the pizza inside the box? There is a very simple method. It's time to create after finishing the tedious practice. This time, it's half create. I combined a background photo with a model of a person. During the process of painting, I added some elements that were different from the original plan. After practicing perspective, I am more confident in arranging the space in my artwork. However, there are still many problems. I should add a few more perspectives to make the image more diverse. The leaves are too flat, wasting the opportunity to utilize space. The composition's focus is on the character rather than the color relationship. I always rely on 3D models for characters and have never specifically practiced anatomy. I find it very boring to tackle a single task alone, especially perspective. Next, I will gradually transition to learning about anatomy and lighting. Please remember, when you practice, you love art, and then art loves you. Let's encourage each other.